What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So today we are going to be talking about one stock that I have pretty much been very vocal on over the last year, year and a half. Been talking about why it's important to avoid this stock because of all the problems, all the underlying challenges the company was facing. And yes, there was a lot of temptation with this company because of the insane dividend yield, but I specifically mentioned why it's a delusion, it's an illusion and how it's not actually accurate and why the company may struggle going forward. So hope you all enjoyed this video. It's going to be a little bit of an updated analysis because the company did report their earnings last week and I've been getting a lot of questions on this company as well. So figured I'd do an updated analysis. And as always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and links to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below. Again, there is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. Um, and I did open up a few more spots if you're interested in joining. And I do have a very important announcement to also make that we recently launched our um, Psychology of Money Investing and Markets course. And this is again, my life's work, nine, 10 years of investing experience with reading many books on personal finance, investing, trading, you get spreadsheets, you get a lot of tutorials and lectures basically to master your mind, right? So when it comes to psychology, this course will cover it all. It co goes over topics related to patience, fear, greed, uh, instant gratification, even even topics related to philosophy of life. So there's a lot of really cool and, and interesting videos. And this is probably one of the courses that I'm super proud of, of all the ones that I've created. Um, so now there's four total, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, options, and psychology. Um, and right now we're doing a Thanksgiving sale as well. So the coupon code is going to be Thanksgiving and everything's going to be 50% off. So on the website, every course that you see, individual course and the bundles are going to be 50% off. So this is, again, the biggest sale of the year and you can access anything. A lifetime access, of course, all future content and lectures will be uploaded for free for you. Uh, so coupon code is going to be Thanksgiving. Link's going to be down below if you're interested in joining. Hundreds of lectures and hours and hours of content available in your educational journey with investing and trading. Um, okay, so moving forward. So the company that we are talking about today is going to be Zim Integrated Shipping, right? So Z-I-M. I did a video on this one year ago. Uh, you know, this is literally one year ago. Uh, beware of the stock, updated analysis, right? So, uh, you know, we've been talking about this company for quite some time and there was a higher yield uh, for this business because as I'll show you, the biggest temptation with this company was the dividend yield, right? So if you take a look at the Zim Integrated Shipping's dividend, uh, 122%, right? I mean, that doesn't make sense. 122%, absolutely crazy, right? So somebody would think, somebody would look at this and be like, wait a minute, 122%. So basically when I get the dividend on an annual basis, I can more than double my money. Like that shouldn't make sense and that doesn't make any sense, right? There's always a catch because there's no free lunches in the market and you are certainly not going to more than double your money uh, with dividends alone by investing in Zim Integrated, right? That's exactly what the whole point was uh, behind this analysis that the dividend will get cut. It will get cut or it will go away for good because the company was very much dependent on shipping rates during the pandemic. We did have significant amount of supply chain issues and as a result, shipping rates exploded and they have now since come back down. And that was primarily the thesis behind why we need to avoid this stock. And, you know, even up until six months ago and eight months ago, I was going through YouTube. I was trying to do some more research. There were a lot of videos posted on why Zim Integrated Shipping is a buying opportunity. So I did, again, I'm not picking on anybody here, but I think it's really important to understand the cyclicality of the businesses as well, because as I mentioned before in my previous videos, no one stock is going to be a buy and hold forever. No one stock or company is going to be immune to all market circumstances. Some market circumstances are going to be favorable for that company versus others may not be as favorable. And even six months ago, like Zim, Zim stock, time to be greedy when the market is fearful. There were multiple videos like five months ago, why I'm choosing to hold my position on Zim integrated shipping. That's not working out too well, is it? This investment can change your life. Like literally 132% dividend yield. Like that's what I'm talking about, right? And this was eight months ago. And if you take a look at what the price has done since, literally it has gone down to a new 52 week low down to like 688. And from about a year ago, from like March 22, it's down over 83%. Even if you go back, let's say, you know, four months, it is down a little bit over 67% from those levels. Um, and, and from like uh, 11 months ago or 12 months ago, this is about a year ago. So this is probably when the video came out uh, and it's down over 64%. And from just August of 23, it's down under 55%. So look, 
there needs to be a lot of analysis with respect to how well the business is doing and the cyclicality of the business as well. You know, this was kind of like the analysis that we did. The dividends will get cut. The dividends will not be there for a long time. And as of the second quarter, Zim Integrated will not pay dividend to shareholders. And they basically paused the dividends moving forward because they were paying 30 to 50 percent of their net earnings. Right. Net earnings is the actual profits, the net income of the business was being distributed as dividends and because of because the profitability has struggled now so if you come back to the fundamentals you'll take a look i mean take a look at these right here the margins have compressed we've seen the earnings go down significantly over the last you know few quarters you can see how significantly it has come down from like $14 right $11 then $9 then $3 and now negative and it's expected to continue and the third quarter they just reported negative 19 uh, dollars per share in earnings with $1.27 billion of revenue. So miss on both revenue and EPS. Um, so a pause on dividend. And this right here is the reason. This is literally the only reason Zim Integrated is struggling right now because we saw a significant jump in shipping rates. These are global container freight rate index uh, from 2019 to 2023 of August. And you can see the cyclicality of the business. And I'll show you what the numbers look like for fundamentals for Zim Integrated as well. It's going to be almost identical. And this right here is $10,361 is how high the global shipping rates went up to and now of course we're sitting at just under 1800 it's normalized a little bit as supply chains have loosened up and we have seen a little bit more of an equilibrium between demand and supply now this right here is the cyclicality of the business and you know when we did those videos when we were discussing about zim integrated there was one simple question is this sustainable that's it that's it if you could answer that question you would probably know whether to invest or not, right? And the answer at that time was no, it's not sustainable because as supply chains loosen up and the demand supply kind of comes back to equilibrium, we're going to see shipping rates come back down, normalize a little bit, and that's exactly what happened. And as a result, we did see revenues and earnings drop back down. So take a look at this, right? So revenue jumped from 3.9, almost 4 billion to over 10.7 billion, and then another 20% growth, and then now it's been cut in half. 50% drop. Take a look at operating income, by the way, 705 million to $5.8 billion, and then back down to $155 million. This right here is net income now actually generating losses up from 4.6, 4.6 billion down to $2.1 billion. So not only has it dropped to zero, but it's actually gone negative. In other words, the company's actually generating losses now. And, uh, and again, this right here is the balance sheet, which obviously does not look super great. We're looking at $1.8 billion of cash with total debt sitting at $4.7 billion. So more debt than cash on the balance sheet with current and quick ratio are somewhat okay. And uh, debt to free cash flow is going to be a little bit under four. Uh, earnings expectations are not that great for this year, next year, and the following year. They're not expected to be profitable anytime soon, uh, considering, again, shipping rates have gone down so much. And as a result, Dividend yield is going to go away. And of course, not to mention the company is going to struggle a little bit. Now, in terms of where we are on a valuation basis, you know, $915 million company uh, with a, you know, revenue of just over $6 billion. So we're looking at six times sales, a little under six times sales, which I guess is not terrible. But at the same time, there's no profitability. The balance sheet's not that great. Uh, and the dividend yield is also an illusion up until now and it's it's paused already it's now gonna get cut uh to basically nothing because there's no earnings so there's no dividend um so unfortunately this is still a stock that's going to be on the sidelines um and it's not going to be worth you know looking at or even investing in at all from my perspective so very very oversold but technically i could see maybe a little bit of a bounce back higher given how oversold this stock really is right now from an RSI and MACD standpoint. So wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's some buyers that step in to push it push it back maybe above 8, 850, uh, some of those levels. But from a fundamental perspective, I mean, my thesis is unchanged from about a year ago and how one needs to kind of beware of this company and not fall for the dividend yield of over 122%. And, uh, and look, this is really where fundamental analysis comes in. This is the whole idea, right? In the short term, prices are going to fluctuate and move dramatically, right? They're going to go up and down and all over the place. Short term price action is not indicative of long term company performance. Literally write that down and internalize that because 
Yes, PayPal and Enphase are struggling right now. And one could argue, Caddy, you you cautioned us about Zim, but then at the same time, Enphase and PayPal are also going down. The difference here is that PayPal and Enphase, I'm confident, will recover in the future, in my opinion. Zim is completely dependent on one single thing, which is shipping rates. And shipping rates had this one-in-a-lifetime surge because of the pandemic and the supply chains being very, very tight. And then it's now normalized. So the chances of them recovering back up to 12, maybe $15 billion revenue and profitability is low versus Enphase and PayPal that are already very strong businesses, growing revenues and cash flows. And the fundamentals continue to be very, very good. And on top of that, they've got a great balance sheet, right? So the bankruptcy risk is significantly lower than something like Zim Integrated, which has more debt than cash on the balance sheet. So in the short term, yes, companies are going to be fluctuating. The price is going to fluctuate. It's going to be volatile. But the but the real fundamental value is derived when the long-term value is created, right? And the long-term recovery happens, right? A lot of stocks like Amazon and, you know, a lot of tech companies dropped like over 90% during the dot-com bubble. A lot of companies dropped over 80% during the great financial crisis. But if we had just written them off, because of the price being so volatile during those times, we would have never invested in anything, right? It's the recovery that happens after is what makes most of the money, right? And that's, I think, really important for us to kind of distinguish between companies that have potential to recover versus companies that may not ever recover. And those are the ones that we need to obviously avoid. And we need to look for opportunity, look for dislocations in the market where the value is far below than the actual, uh, well, the price, the price is actually far below than the actual value that we're getting. Um, so hope you guys enjoy this video and a little bit of an update on Zim Integrated. Let me know if you have any questions, feel free to join our discord and Patreon 16% annual discount and courses right now is Thanksgiving 50% off. This is the biggest sale of the year and the coupon uh, code is going to be Thanksgiving and the link's going to be down below. Happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.